welcome back to the channel. I'm Jimmy, and in this video, I'm going to tell you what it's been like to own my 2023 Lexus GX460 Blackline for six months. During this time, I've put over 8,000 miles on the car, and I've driven it across four states, so I've had plenty of time behind the wheel getting to know this car and getting to make observations. The GX has taken me places where I didn't think it could go, while maintaining its reputation for reliability and comfort. This car continues to surprise me as I take it on new, uncharted, and unexpected adventures. As you can probably see, I've already done some mods to my GX, so I listed them in the introduction clip if you're interested in purchasing any of the same parts. I made these changes to the GX so that I could take this car more places and do that more confidently and not really worry about where I could go or not go. Despite the soft looks that say otherwise, the GX is a great platform for off-roading, and with just a few changes, it can become extremely capable. And so far in my experience, that is very true. For my budget, I could afford capability or aesthetics, but not both. So I went with the lift, wheels, and tires, rather than just doing bumpers and lights. Even though the look of the GX itself didn't change, its new stance is enough to make me look back every time I leave it. The setup has been excellent and there are no more mods that would be an absolute necessity for me, but that's not to say I won't consider doing more to this car in the future. I can't say that I've performed any instrumented tests after lifting the GX to measure numerical gains such as ground clearance, articulation, approach, breakover, and departure angles. But I can tell you what I've been able to do since modding the GX, and I can tell you how it drives compared to other vehicles I've tested on the same terrain. Many of the clips you see in this video are of the GX driving through a short loop somewhere in the Texas Hill Country, on which I've driven a Jeep Gladiator Mojave on 37s, a Ford Raptor with Hennessy's Velociraptor 600 package, a Ford Bronco Badlands with the Sasquatch package, and some other vehicles. What I quickly realized after driving the GX on this route is that it's not like the others. It doesn't like to be rushed. Don't get me wrong, it's fantastic off-road. It's just not the high-speed desert runner that the others are. But that's not the point of it. Slow things down and the GX is happy to ascend and descend the steepest hills, conquer large rocks, and claw its way through mud and sand. The GX might not do those things as quickly as the others can, but the others can't touch its smooth and comfortable nature when it returns to the pavement. The GX, in my opinion, offers more than enough off-road capability while having little to no compromises on the road. Other off-roaders suffer from things such as wind noise, poor ride quality, or even poor reliability. The GX suffers from none of those. Now, I wouldn't be saying these good things about the GX unless it proves these things to me. But it did as I road tripped with two of my friends. We began in Texas and drove through New Mexico and Arizona to reach our destination in Colorado. The majority of the trip was on road, but I was able to convince my friends that some off-road routes that I'd planned the night before were shortcuts. So I was able to make good use of my new suspension setup for the first time off the pavement. The first so-called shortcut we went on was somewhere in the middle of Arizona. The landscape was mostly flat, varying between rocky and sandy. This meant that I was able to spend some time figuring out what speeds the GX could handle and at what point this suspension would be overwhelmed. I was able to reach speeds of up to 50 miles per hour without issue through some of the sandy sections, but I had to be careful of holes in the large rocks after experiencing what it was like to bottom out the front right shock. Over the more rocky terrain, the GX was happy at 20 to 25 miles an hour, but the car tended to skate with increased speed. I felt relieved after the first outing because it looked like we were driving on Mars on some different planet for like 20 miles, and I was thankful to be back on the road and thankful that my new mods had worked as intended. My second off-road outing in the GX was through the beautiful mountains of Colorado. The trails were much more treacherous than anything prior and definitely demanded the maximum of the GX's capabilities. The majority of the drive was spent in four low, in first and second gear, so we were not moving quickly. We drove for over five hours on trails that included loose sand and rocks, large drops from boulders and roots, 
steep grades, dips, whoops, and fire ribs. We also got up to 30 degrees sideways, which felt like a lot from the driver's seat. As we explored those trails, I kept thinking to myself that we were going to have to turn around because there would be some obstacle that would be too much for the GX. But it continued to surprise me as it conquered each one. There were several times throughout the journey where we would hit a rock or take a drop for the hundredth time, and I thought to myself that something had to be broken after repeated abuse like that, but the GX moved along without issue. I did experiment with DAC, or downhill assist control, but I ended up being more confident braking on my own because I found it jerky and unpredictable. On the fire roads, the GX once again skated at higher speed, but it wasn't enough to feel out of control. The GX finished the trail and drove home just as well as it did before we began the journey. The only thing that it suffered from were a few new pinstripes and a light scuff on the annoyingly large front overhang. I may use that as an excuse to bite the bullet and install a bumper with higher clearance, but I'm not sure what the future of the GX is in terms of mods. After that drive, I realized what all the hype is about the GX460. It truly is a monster of an off-road SUV, and I would argue it's one of the most underrated. Overall, the first six months of ownership of my GX has been fantastic. I expected the GX to be easy to own, but I still expected there to be things that would annoy me about it. But to be fully transparent, I don't think there's anything about this car that I truly dislike. The engine is silky smooth, the six speed is simple for the better, and the looks have grown on me a lot. It's got just enough power, the interior, infotainment, and sound system are great, and the seats don't get uncomfortable after hours on the road. And did I mention it still seats seven? The best way I can explain the way I feel about the GX is that there are ways that I think it could be improved, but I don't think any of those are criticisms I have about it. It's just so good at being good. I don't know how to put it any other way. So to conclude this review, I would highly recommend the Lexus GX460 to anyone considering it. And I would get it while you can because I believe it will be one of the last body on frame, four wheel drive V8 SUVs on sale. I have no grievances about my ownership of this car and I look forward to the miles and the adventures ahead, whether on or off road, that the GX will take me. Thanks for watching.